with 368 alleys squeezed into just one square kilometer. This is the old walled city of Harar in Eastern Ethiopia. Its thick high walls were erected in the 13th century by the indigenous Harar people, a unique ethnic minority group. While Harar is used to inhabit a much larger area, their population has declined and they now live behind the city's walls. In 2016, UNESCO recognized Harar as a heritage site to protect its history as one of the world's ancient civilizations. The Ethiopian government also made Harar its own federal state, the smallest in the country. Yet the Electoral Commission recently refused to allow Hararis living in other parts of Ethiopia to vote for candidates in their homeland in upcoming parliamentary elections. But after Hararis challenged that decision in the Supreme Court, it ruled in their favor. All we want is to preserve our culture and heritage. The reason Hararis have a quasi-state today is in recognition of Harari culture, language, history, and perhaps most importantly, to redress the injustices perpetrated against us. Preserving Harari governance will prevent a tyranny of the majority, protect indigenous and minority rights, and quite simply, it is just fair. Following the Supreme Court ruling, the Electoral Commission asked for more time to conduct a special registration of Harari voters in other parts of Ethiopia to enable them vote in their homeland. For Hararis, the question of who gets to govern Harar is central to their existence. And they say that's especially important as they are facing competition from settlers encroaching on their land. We are really worried about the future of our people. As our population keeps declining, the plot to take over Harara by other ethnic groups is getting thicker. The challenges facing the people of the Harar region is best illustrated by the housing estate behind me. It was built with funds from the diaspora, people living in the United States and Europe, but now lies abundant as people from the neighboring Oromia region came to claim the land as their own. This week's elections will also not take place in the neighboring Somali region of Ethiopia. The Electoral Commission has postponed the polls there, citing defects with polling material. The region has known more instability than peace in the past three decades. Two years ago, the rebel group Ogaden National Liberation Front signed a peace agreement with the Ethiopian government and demobilized its troops. We were all thinking that our region will for once vote with the rest of Ethiopia. We are at peace for once and we are all being forced to wait till September to exercise our constitutional right. Voting has also been postponed in the northern conflict torn Tigray region where hundreds of thousands of people are suffering from famine. A new date for a vote in Tigray has not been set. Together, the Harar, Tigray and Somali regions account for 63 out of 547 parliamentary seats. And to many of the people in those regions being unable to vote, they say, undermines their existence. Mohamed Adou Al-Jazeera, Harar in Eastern Ethiopia.